Hey Bayek, it's me Ian. and in today's video, well, I'm continuing my look at classic albums, um, well, from my CD collection, which I think is a classic, but I think this one really is considered one of the all-time classic albums. It is Who's Next by The Who from 1971. Um... This is their fifth studio album. Previously, we had had Live at Leeds, 1970. And of course, what an album that is. It would be because it's from Leeds, of course. <laughs> yes. And um, the next album would be Meaty Beaty, Big and Bouncy. That from 1971 is a compilation of uh, the singles released by the who and then the next album is quadrophenia oh yes 1973 what a album that is it's another rock opera it's the second rock opera which is one of the great successful um albums and of course it was made into a film like tommy was as well because tommy was the first rock opera that they did was made into a film quadrophenia is such a brilliant film um i think it's better than Quad uh, better than tommy it's quadrophenia i absolutely love it and it it made stars of so many people it's a film that is still talked about what a film that is and what brilliant music and that all comes from quadrophenia right so this album was recorded between April and June 1971 and it was released on the 14th of August 1971. Um, now it was recorded at the Olympic uh, Studios London, um, Star Groves, uh, East Woodhay, um, England and the Rolling Stones mobile studio um the label that the who are on is track um that's in the uk and in um the us it's decca this is also produced by the who themselves and glenn johns now glenn johns in terms of um producer um also he he was an engineer as well as as they often are and engineered and produced um but the artist that uh he's produced and been involved with we have steve miller band the move family rolling stones faces boz Skaggs, eagles um fairport convention uh eric clapton um Linda Ronstadt, Emmy Lou Harris. Wow. Whoa, love them two artists. Absolutely brilliant. And Paul McCartney. Wow. Um, what a selection of brilliant artists. Oh, wow. That's amazing. It really is. Um, now Kit Lambert, who is the Who's manager, um, also um did three tracks on this uh album as a sort of producer um i think that came later um definitely um in further releases that were made um that, you know added on bonus tracks um so on the actual album that was released at this time as i say it is it's all down to this wonderful production. Um, I, I, you can't really say high enough how good this production is. And with the band in such brilliant form, the songwriting, 
the way they're playing. He he has all the ingredients that have come together so well. And here it is. You've got a great producer, a band in great form, great songs. Fantastic. And the magic happens. It really does. So, um, uh, also, the, um, the cover, um, which is, well, the cover is outstanding. It's, uh, it's really like a reference to the monolith. If you remember in 2001 Space Oddity, the film from 1968. In fact, this photograph was taken from a slag heap, a slag heap in um, South Yorkshire, I think south of Sh uh, Sheffield. And they sort of doctored up the photograph a bit and made it absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's such an outstanding photograph now. Um, it, so recognisable. Um, and the back cover photo is from De Mop for All. Yeah, Leicester. Famous gig, famous venue, wonderful venue. I must have, I mean, I've been there as well. To De Mop for All. Yes. Um, as I've been to Leeds, of course, Leeds University uh, uh, gigs. <laughs> which is live um, from Leeds album, 1970. Okay, so let's get through the lineup of the band on here. Uh, we've got Roger Daltrey playing lead vocals. What a job he does in those lead vocals. Absolutely fantastic. His voice, so good. Then we've got Pete Townsend. He plays the guitar. He plays the... Um, uh, VCS3, uh, organ, synthesizer, piano. Then we've got John Entwistle playing bass, uh, brass, vocals, and the piano on his song, My Wife, which he wrote. Um, then we've got, of course, the brilliant Keith Moon doing the drums and percussion. Um, what a great drummer Keith Moon is. For all the hype around him and um, the craziness of his life, him dying so untimely as well, he, we mustn't forget what a great drummer he was. He was really part of the driving force of um, The Who. Wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Um, and um, David Arbus plays the violin on Barber. O'Reilly, uh, which is wonderful, I've, um, I've had so much. So let's go through the tracks. It starts off with Barber O'Reilly, which is a great introduction to the album. You just, when you hear that song, you know you're listening to something special introducing the whole album. Then we get Bargain, then we get Love for Keeping. You get My Wife, which I mentioned earlier, which is John Entwistle's song. You get uh, The Song Is Over. You get Getting In Tune. Then you get Going Mobile. And then Behind Blue Eyes. And then it ends in an absolute climax with one of the all-time great singles, Won't Get Fooled Again. It's an anthem for The Who. Um, it brilliantly um, brings everything together on this album. What a track. Won't get fooled again. It has everything you just love. It just, it really is an anthem. Um, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. And I think it sort of elevates everything. And, and the quality of the album, the band playing well with... The production is amazing. And that's why this is simply their best album of their career and is considered a classic album because it, it represents all that is good. You can pinpoint it, I think, when you listen to it, to this particular era in music and how it, it, it's just a classic. It really is a classic rock album and wonderful um I think the thing about The Who as well um, that you get on this, you get their wonderful contrasts in their playing. 
there's this powerful playing. It is absolutely powerful. You know, the guitars, the drums, the vocals, of course. I mean, how powerful. And the bass. We mustn't forget the bass as well. The way all that fits in. And then there's kind of a counterpoint to that. You get this acoustic side as well with acoustic guitars a more gentler softer side and then you get the synthesizers wow it all brilliantly fits together so well and this is where you we have why this art is an album that they really like bring it's the peak of their abilities um because as, as I said before, though we, they produce some great albums and they do produce um, some great albums, but this is the album for them. It really is. Um, and I think it, it's good that they produce this album because it kind of puts to bed the idea that they can only really be seen as a big singles band who were able townsend able to and do the the rock opera but not produce um an album like this this is a brilliant classic album there's no doubt about it absolutely love it and you can feel that when you listen to it it's it's something special it really is um and say it's 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 in it's an influential album you know in terms of hard rock music as well um punk um power pop even yeah it's got that in and also our influence at the time also the mod bands as well um you can see that in this album you can see it all, but now I think it would be considered a classic rock album because it is that it it's that moment in time where everything came together and they produced this and that's it's their peak of their career. Uh, it really is. Though I would I have to say that Quadrophenia in nineteen seventy three is a brilliant um, album as well. And of course, I think the fact is elevated by the success of the film, of course. When the film came out, that really highlighted how good Quadrophenia was because it is a brilliant film. I would contend it's actually better than Tommy. Tommy's great and got some great things in Tommy, uh, especially all the guest artist performances. But, but Quadrophenia, wow, what a film. And the background with the soundtrack from this is just great absolutely wonderful um that's it but as i say as an album this is the high point of the who's career and if you've not heard it well you should do <laughs> yes it it just uh i know i'm wishing really on about it but it, it just it's just a great album and you can't help but love it um well i can't i mean not everybody would but hey I love it and um, I feel so enthusiastic and uplifted as well when I, I listen to it. I know I'm listening to something really special. It's not just being bung together or what have you with a few hit singles and everything around it is not quite as good. Every track is well thought out, well put in, is well worth its place on this album and that kind of elevates everything. There's no kind of... They always use that word, it's a filler. Um, there's nothing of that in it. Um, there's no fillers at all. I think fillers is often a, a lazy term. I don't think sometimes people deliberately put a track in and they think, oh, well, we've got no else where to put that in. Maybe they do sometimes, but uh, <laughs> you don't get that uh, feel at all. Um, it's a genuinely great album. Highly recommended. And, um, yeah, uh, I've gone on too much about it. Before I go, I'll just show you my CD copy here. This is a special edition. Uh, this is from 2010. Um, and on here, we've also got the New York Record Plant Session 
which includes more tracks. And then we've got at the Young Vic, we have got the actual um, brilliant, absolutely brilliant uh, live session that they did. That um, is really good. And that's it. Um, uh, yes, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and um, thank you uh, for just putting up with me going on <laughs> because I've gone on too long. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and we'll let you know when I put out these videos. And also, um, if you like this video, please give it a like because it gets it out to YouTube and hopefully other people will appreciate it and enjoy it. Or perhaps they won't, but anyhow. Um, so give it a like. It'd be great. Thank you so much if you can do that. And if you have any comments as well, please put your comments down. I'd love to read your comments. I'll always reply to them. And that's it. I've gone on far too long. So all I've got to say is, I'll see thee. I'll see thee again. <laughs>